Praise the Lord. My dear children of God, the Mother Church teaches us in this 18th Sunday of Ordinary Week a mighty message that we come from God and we move through Him and we have life through Him. I was told there was a professor who called three of his most intelligent students and he asked them to take their right hand and breathe over it. And all the three of them, they breathed. The professor asked the students, how do you feel? What do you feel? The first student said, sir, when I breathed my breath, suddenly I realized that I have very short breath. What will happen to me if that breath stops? The another student said, Sir, when you asked us to do something strange, take the hand and breathe, my mind was caught up with you, sir. I was thinking what you are asking us to do. About to breathe, by that time, the time is over. You asked us, what is the meaning of that? The third student said, Sir, as I was breathing, suddenly I realized my breath is short, but soon another breath was coming. Another breath was coming to support me. Though my first breath is short, I realized there are so many breaths the one who gives the breath is living in me. The source of breath is living in me. When my breath is shortened or going to stop, the source of the breath supplies another breath, another breath and makes me to live on. Beyond my breath, I see the Lord of the breath living in me. The professor, though he was so happy with that answer, he said, there is something beyond that. Do you know why God gives us breath? There are so many people without that breath of God, the life of God. And God gives you the breath. And though your breath is Short, he continues to supply his breath to you because you may become a blessing to the breathless world. We read in St. John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus, the risen Savior, sees his own disciples. The doors of the house were locked for fear of the Jews. The apostles are frightened. And the Bible says, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be to you. Peace be with you. Why are you disturbed? Why do you have the absence of peace when I am there for you, the source of peace? And then, the Bible says, he breathed his breath once again into them. And the broken disciples, the disturbed disciples, they came to life. Yes, our Lord, Jesus is alive and he is with us. We are not alone on this earth. Yes. My dear friends, there are so many people in the world like the first man who breathed and he said, oh, my breath is short. If my breath gets stopped, what will happen to me? People in the world get stuck up with themselves. They build their own lives. They are concerned about their own career, their own growth. Who will support me? Who will love me? Who will tell me you are good, you are handsome, you are beautiful? Who will support me? Who will build me up? Nobody can build one another. Only God can build. Man can stand with us to a level. 
things of this world can stand with us for a level. Only the eternal God can fulfill the hunger and the deepest need of every person. Man, without realizing it, most of the time he gets stuck up with himself. That's what in today's gospel we read. In Luke's gospel, chapter 12, where Jesus says, there are people in the world, in spite of, they have received life from God. They get stuck up with the gifts than the giver of the gifts. Jesus gave a parable saying, there was a rich man. God had blessed him. God had blessed and gave him very good crop. And he was so happy. Happiness is different from joy. You can be happy with many things, but the joy comes from God. Jesus said in John 16, 20, sometime but by the things that happen to you, you will be crying. You will be looking for support. But the people around you, they will not understand you. They may even laugh at you. But the one who is within you, who knows you, he will turn your sadness into joy. Get stuck up with him and you will live on. Be aware that your breath is coming from the breath, your God. That you are continue to supply the breath of God breathes upon you that you may understand you have a mission. You are not called to live for yourself, to go beyond yourself and see your God in the world and breathe as Jesus breathed the disciples who were broken and wounded. Jesus said the parable, the man who had a very good harvest, he said, what will I do? I got plenty of harvest. And he tells his soul, make merry, enjoy. God said, fool! You are a fool! The person who doesn't know who he is, is a fool. He gave him a name. Because tonight, you are going to die and you never recognize who gave it to you. You never recognize why did he give these things to you, not to somebody else. He has a mission for you. The man who doesn't realize who he is in the Lord and why the Lord leads me into a particular way of life. Maybe problems and situations are not good. The condition is not good. But your call is always perfect. The one who called you has a mission. So he may be putting you into the problem that you may bring solution to the problem. He may lead you to the darkness not to get stuck up with the darkness. But you may be aware of the light he has given to you. Only the candle which burns can lit the candles which has no light. And this rich man, neither, neither he realized who gave him all these gifts, nor he realized the mission that God has for him by giving those great riches. When he did not recognize his God, he never thanked God. He never worshipped God. He never celebrated his God. He made his life a miserable one. God called him a fool. That's what happened with the millions of people. And like the second man who said, Sir, as I was breathing, my mind went on you. Why, sir, is asking? My thoughts went on your thoughts. Many people get stuck up with the world, with the things of the world with the philosophy of the world, with the politics of the world, with the struggle and pain of the world. They cannot see God beyond them. 
That's why in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 27, it is written, I share with you a great secret. The God who brings hope is in you. The God who has created you for glory is in you. Move with Him. Then His hope will move in your life. Move with God and His glory will accompany you wherever you go. It is when we begin to live in the hope and the glory of God, our God finds meaning and hope and life. So in today's second reading, that's what we read in Colossians chapter 3. Seek the things beyond your life. Don't get stuck up with the things of this world. Rather, look at the Lord. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God to supply all that is needed for you. For every vocation, He has got every way to guide us. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden in Christ. When Christ is your life, is revealed, then you will be also revealed with Him in glory. So, put to death, therefore whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed. Why did God give you all this? He says, being having clothed with a new life, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. You no longer see people as Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, slave and free. But you see, Christ is all and in all. You see Christ in all and all in Christ. My dear friends, in today's First reading we read about the book of Ecclesiasticus. The author of Ecclesiasticus is known as King Solomon. God had blessed him and gave him wisdom and knowledge. But this foolish man, wherever he went, wherever he saw a young beautiful woman, he threw away his holy call. He built a temple for God. So what? By building a temple for God or working for God, you don't reach God. Working for God is different from moving with God, living with God, living for God, living in the glory and hope of God. He built the temple. He gave the cattle for offering. But whenever he saw his body is pulling him. The world is attracting him. He threw away his life. He married as many women as possible. Each woman said, Solomon, you have your God. Allow us to have our God. Give us the freedom. The holy city of Jerusalem was filled with the worship of all kinds of God. All kinds of evil entered into Jerusalem and destroyed the city. The heart of God was broken. He said to Solomon, Because of my servant David, I want to show mercy to your generation. Your son will have only two tribes, but your servant will have ten tribes. Your sin is destroying. God has blessed you, but... Instead of fixing your eyes on the Lord, the breath of your life, you threw away your life to the things of this earth. You allowed your mind to get stuck up with this world, stuck up with the woman of this world, the lust of this world, and they will kill you. And they are killing you. Yes. 
Solomon cried. Vanity, vanity, everything is vanity. Everything is passing away. I built a beautiful house. I thought it would be always new. It is becoming old. I bought so many orchards, fields. I thought they would be make me happy. No. I thought I would be always young. Put all kinds of powders, scents. But day by day I am becoming old. Without God. When you get stuck up with the world, the things of the world, at the end of the day, you will cry like Solomon. My life is empty. My life has become as though trying to catch the wind. My dear friends, that's why in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 21, which is today's Gospel, Jesus said, It is with those who who store up their treasures for themselves because they are not rich towards their God. If you and I are not rich in the Lord, we will be always poor in the world. Today, August 4th, we celebrate the feast day of a great saint called John Maria Vianney. An ordinary man, but had a golden heart for God. His superiors could not recognize him. They, they saw his poor intelligence, poor grasping power. With the hard prayers, he passed the exams with the 40 marks and became a priest. The bishop thought, if I put him in the town, he may make many brothers. He has not studied properly. So put him in the corner of the diocese in the near forest area. When John Maria Vianney went there, he saw the people who are without God. They don't seek God and their lives are getting ruined. He said, I need to possess. If the people are dying, I have to bring the life. I cannot bring. Only through God I can bring life. So he learned to die to himself. He saw the breath beyond his breath. The breath that supports his breath. The breath that in builds up his breath. God, through fasting, prayer, and through many sacrifices, Spend hours and hours in front of the Blessed Sacrament, hungering, Lord, I need you. I want you to guide me. I want to be part of you. First John 5, 12 says, He who has the Son, Jesus, will have the life of the Son, life of Jesus. He who doesn't have the Son will not have any life at all. John Maria Vianney, through fasting, through his sacrifices, through long prayers, he received the gifts from the Holy Spirit, gift of knowledge, to know what it is. When he meets the people, he will know what is happening to that individual. Gift of wisdom. Now what to do? This man is going through, this woman is going through this problem. Now what they are supposed to do? Gift of wisdom. What is right? What is wrong? Gift of discernment. So, when he spent, when he learned to die to himself and hungered for God, the Lord who sees everyone's heart fulfilled his desire, filled him with the Holy Spirit and with the gift of knowledge, wisdom and discernment, he started to guide people started to tell people of what their sins. People started to come for confession. The kings started to come. The priests, bishops, cardinals. That indeed a village became a spirit-filled village. Yes, you may be thrown in a corner. You may be a small man. The world may consider you small. Don't worry. Be 
get united with the big God and all that of God will be part of you. Your success in life is not where you are or what you are in the world, but are you connected with Him? If you are connected with Him, all that of Him will become part of you. May the breath that makes you to live help you that you may possess Him and give Him to this broken world. May Jesus of Nazareth who breathed to the frightened disciples and built them and anointed them with the Holy Spirit bless you and help you to be aware of the great breath that is in you and you may give that breath to this breathless world. May God bless you all. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name, most high, I am yielding to your spirit. I am walking in thy light. Lord Jesus, I adore your holy name. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.